All right, Brianna. Brianna, uh, where'd you grow up? Where are you from originally? Um, I grew up in Miami, Florida. Um, originally from Miami, Florida. I moved to um, Fort Lauderdale when I was 13. Mm -hmm. Tell me about your family growing up. Um, growing up, um, my dad used to be um, in real estate and an accountant. And my mother works, well, she worked out of nowhere back then, but she works in bookkeeping. And my dad, when I was three years old, he started doing cocaine and then it escalated into crystal meth. And um, his whole personality changed. He started getting felonies on his record and um, lost all the money. He put a loan on the house that me and my brother and my mom were living in. And it was really hard because he ruined a lot um, financially for my family. And I'm the eldest child in my family. And I kind of got the blame for what my dad has done. And it was really hard on me. And he has um, stolen from his relatives and has ruined the family's reputation in many ways. And that's and all because of his drug addiction? Yes, and he, he was abusive, he was around prostitutes all the time, and um, he, when my brother was being picked up by him, when my mom and, before my mom and my dad had a custody battle, he bought a convicted child molester in the car to pick my little brother up when he was like six years old. Um, it, it was rough. How far did you go to school? Um, I went, I got my GED. I actually, when I was around 18 years old, I quit school and I ended up getting my GED. Um, when I was younger, I struggled with my mental health issues and I didn't, care about school or anything. Um, I have BPD and I have schizophrenia. And I was making terrible decisions. Um, I partied a lot and didn't care about my future. And I struggled with um, trauma from being sexually abused and I was going down a dark path. You were sexually abused when? When I was a child. And it was, you know, um, when I was, when I got older, um, it affected me and I started getting into toxic relationships and that were, code, that were codependent and I started getting attachments and abandonment issues from it. You were sexually abused by a family member or? Yes. I was. Yeah. You, were, you were diagnosed with uh, borderline personality disorder and schizophrenia when? When I was 13, I was diagnosed with schizophrenia when I was staying in a long-term psychiatric unit. And when I got older, it turned into schizoaffective. And I was diagnosed with BPD when I, BPD traits when I was around 16 by my psychiatrist. Um, I was recently diagnosed with CPTSD. Are there medications that you're on for this? Yes, I'm on Abilify right now. Um, one of my long-term goals is to advocate for mental health. And I want to stand up for people who have been failed by the mental health system because Florida has a problem. Um, Florida has a problem with the Florida Baker Act 
and I've been Baker acted before. Um, it's basically where they put you in a 72 hour hold and um, you're handcuffed by police, police officers and um, you're put in the back of the police car and you're put in there with mean staff who treat you like an animal. And um, there's an injection that the mental health technicians called booty juice. And um, basically it's where they hold patients down and against their will, they inject them. And there has been enormous amounts of abuse in mental hospitals that hasn't been talked about in Florida. It's a sedative? Yes. It's a sedative. And unfortunately, I, I have friends who, who that happened to, and I, I was um, emotionally abused by the staff in the mental hospitals. And it's like you're being punished for needing help. It's, it doesn't help you at all. There's no treatment plan afterwards. And I think something should be done about it. And there is also a housing crisis in Florida. And um, if, you're, if you have a disability and you're low income and you have a lack of support, it's like you can't get low income housing. There's no Section 8. There's no subsidized housing that even exists in the state of Florida. So if you're low income, um, mentally ill, and you have no support, you're basically screwed. And this is something that I have been stressed about lately because I have schizoaffective disorder and schizophrenia and BPD. And I have to work, you know, I work part time right now. And I go to college right now. And um, if something were to happen to me, if I were to, if an emergency happened and I had to get hospitalized or something, I wouldn't be okay because I don't have enough support and I have to pay rent. It's been difficult, a little stressful. How old are you now? I'm 23. 23. I just turned 23 yesterday. Oh, happy birthday. Thank you. So your, your struggles with your mental conditions, they, they continue even though you're on Abilify? Yes. Um, I've heard voices um, calling me a pig, um, calling me, d degrading me and calling me all kinds of names, like on a daily basis. And they would tell me, they would criticize my work performance while I'm at work and tell me I'm doing a bad job. And they would make me feel very insecure. And there were voices that have been affect like you know i've been hearing voices all day like that and with abilify it helps a little bit but it doesn't completely make it go away and those voices have contributed to an eating disorder because they have degraded me nonstop all day and that's all i was hearing when you say the voices are degrading in, in what way They would call me names. They would tell me to kill myself. They would. I would hear them loudly. And it would be nonstop all day on a daily basis. And it would make me have episodes, um, schizophrenic episodes, where I would yell back at them. What do, what do you think? most people that don't have these conditions or aren't experienced with them, uh, what do you think they don't understand? It's hard. You know, I have to ignore them. I have to pretend that I don't hear them. And I have to, and it's hard to live with it on a daily basis. Like hearing people talk to you that aren't really there. Um, 
It's a very tough condition to live with. When, and, and if you're in public and you're hearing these things and you have a mental breakdown or an episode, what are the police gonna think? That you're using drugs? Yeah. And I don't use drugs and there's a reason I don't use drugs and it's because of my father. And I don't want to end up like he did. That's a good enough reason. Yeah. yeah especially with a mental condition that drugs are not going to help. No, they're not. And I've seen what it's done to my family. It has destroyed a lot of things for my family. And I did get the blame for it. Um, some hurtful things have been said to me by my family because I either look like my dad or I'm the eldest child in my family, which my dad was. I was kind of made into a scapegoat and treated unfairly because of my dad's actions. I know you're only 23, but what, what, do you have any big regrets in your life? Yes, I do. I regret some of the decisions I've made due to um, my BPD. When I was 12 years old, um, I had a suicide attempt where I jumped off a six-story balcony. And it's actually a miracle that I'm alive today, here telling my story. How did you survive a, a six-story jump? I don't remember much of it, but what I do remember is that I did hesitate while I was on the balcony, but it was too late and I fell. And I was 12 years old and I was very alone. I felt like nobody loved or cared about me and I, I attempted suicide. And when I, when I jumped or fell, um, I, I was on the floor and I, I only remember waking up in the hospital, in the ICU, hooked up to tubes. I had a feeding tube and I had a breathing tube and I had to do facial reconstruction surgery on my face. Were there other injuries? Yes. Um, this was what happened to my arm. My arm was like this when I jumped and there was muscle sticking out of it. And I was, um, my face, my jaw was broken. Um, I had to get plastic surgery on my entire face and I had a trig. Can you explain to the viewers who don't really know much about borderline personality disorder, what, what, it, what it's like? It's being emotionally dysregulated. Um, it's hard to control your emotions and um, it's being paranoid and untrusting of other people. It's developing attachments. Um, you develop attachments to people that your whole world revolves around and it even can become an obsession. And it's having a fear of abandonment. And I've been through some toxic relationships where I was codependent or I had a savior complex with people and um, there were times where I got hurt because I was so attached to this person that was abusive that I didn't, I couldn't let them go. Um, I had emotionally and physically abusive ex-boyfriends and I stayed with them. It's, it's a very painful mental health disorder to live with. Yeah, a suicide attempt at 12 years old is pretty extreme. Yeah. Um, 
I was in love with someone and I and there's a term called favorite person in the borderline community and favorite person is one specific person who your whole world revol revolves around and it can be an obsession and I had a favorite person who I was very attached to and he ended up taking advantage of me and he was a very bad person and he reminded me of my childhood a little bit. Um, he led me um, into a hotel for my birthday and he invited, invited a bunch of guys and we drunk alcohol and we smoked weed and the weed turned out to be laced. And he left and I ended up being sexually violated in the hotel in 2019. And he scammed me. Um, he, he caused a lot of trauma in my life. He emotionally abused me. He threatened me with my life. I've been through a lot of toxic relationships, such as that one. And I have a lot of friends, and I had a very close friend who was very, like, I had a close friend who I really loved and cared about so much and she was going through some similar things that I was going through and she committed suicide last year and um, it's like the mental health system has failed her, it's failed me, it's failed a lot of people and I really want to make a difference. I want to do right by her. I have a tattoo with a semicolon here. It's my middle name with a semicolon for the eye. And the meaning of the semicolon is for suicide prevention and to, and that it, it continues. What is your biggest fear? at this point in your life? I have a fear of failure. I have a feel, fear of not making it, of having no support. Those are, those are normal fears though. You don't, you don't have a fear of ending up on a six story balcony again? No, um, this happened, I'm 23 right now. This happened when I was 12 years old. I, I do have a little bit of a fear of heights due to that incident. Um, if I were to go in any high place, I would be a little scared. Yeah, but just, just the, the tendency to want to end your life is what I'm re referring to. I self-harmed. I used to cut a lot. And I don't necessarily... Um, have a fear of that happening again because I know that I, I won't jump again. But, but suicide attempts are common with people with BPD. They're extremely common and um, it's very unfortunate. My friend who committed suicide last year had BPD and I've had not just one, but several suicide attempts. And it's very important to spread awareness of BPD. The favorite person thing is a common story with BPD as well. What, what is that all about? It's, it's like you, you pick one person that just becomes your everything? You don't even, um, you don't pick them. You don't, you don't pick them, but it just happens. You just start develop, developing these strong feelings for somebody. You start developing strong feelings for someone 
that you can't get them out of your head. Um, you can't let go of them. It's very hard to do. Are there any positive aspects to BPD? Yes. Um, there's empathy. There's, um, there's creativity, you know, um, people with BPD are very capable of loving people deeply and truly. And a lot of people with BPD have empathy and a lot of people with BPD are creative and strong beyond the trauma that they've experienced. It's like you, you feel your emotions more intensely than the rest of us. Yes. What, what emotions do you go through typically? Do you get depressed, angry, anxious? I get depressed. I get irritable. Um, I get anxious a lot. Um, I get, I get happy. I get manic sometimes. Um, my, I had mood swings, um, when I get mood swings, it's like, it goes through the course of a day in 24 hours, my, my moods will ch change between happy, sad, angry, very quickly, rapidly. And you mentioned you're also schizophrenic. Is that something that just came into your life recently? Um, yes, it came into my life recently, as in around two years ago. Yeah, usually it's early 20s. Yeah, it came around two years ago, and I don't know what caused it. Maybe it was from the trauma, and um, maybe it was from being homeless for six months. When I was 18, I... I stayed at a homeless shelter for six months and I was also on the streets. Which, which is more of a, a problem for you? Is it BPD or the schizophrenia? Um, depending on... Schizophrenia has its moments. So sometimes it's livable, sometimes it's copable and ignorable. But when it becomes a problem, it becomes a big problem. So I have some good moments with schizophrenia. And with BPD, it's like something I, I've dealt with every single day. Um, I'd say that it's both because with schizophrenia, it depends on how bad it gets. Do you have times where you just wish you were normal and didn't have these conditions? Yes, because I didn't ask for them. And it's not, it's not fun to live with. Are there people in your family that have similar conditions? My dad is a drug addict and he had bipolar disorder and it turned into schizophrenia because of the meth. Um, my, my mother had anxiety my grandfather had uh, bipolar. But nobody had BPD or schizophrenia without any drugs. Does it slow down your, your ability to take care of yourself and keep a job and things like that? It makes it tough. It makes it very difficult. Um, it makes, um, my schizophrenia affected my job performance because I would hear voices at work, but I did my best to, um, ignore it and just don't listen to it. My anxiety is very bad and at first my BPD has affected my ability to 
do anything with my life. I've, I was self-destructive. I was partying and I was doing stupid things and not thinking about my future for a while. It's gotten much better now because now I'm really focused on college and I'm focused on, um, I'm focused on my job right now and getting better and doing good in my life. Do you have friends? Yeah, I have some friends. What would you say is your greatest strength? My greatest strength? Um, I'm very creative and artistic and I'm empathetic. Um, I'm a good singer. I'm a good writer. I'm very good at writing. It's one of my biggest strengths. Um, and I'm artistically creative. Um, I really want to make a difference and make changes to the mental health system and advocate. What would you say is the most important lesson you've learned in your life? Most important lesson? Um, um, keep trying, be productive, distract yourself. If you're depressed and dwelling on the past and um, unable to move forward, start distracting yourself. Don't think about it. If you're grieving, don't think about it. Keep pursuing, keep working on yourself, keep like doing things with your life. Don't be unproductive. All right, Brianna, thank you so much for sharing your story. Thank you. I wish you lots of luck with your career and uh, I hope you're schizophrenia and borderline kind of stay out of your out of your way thank you thank you very much